Jagdeo's derisive uh, comments about the coalition government being corrupt is not intended for the right-thinking Guyanese, who in the main know that is untrue. But Jagdeo is having huge problems with his rank and file. And so much, so such untrue comments will strike a chord with his untutored party organizers and members to regain their support. That is his purpose. You see, the belly is moving these fanatical PPPites outwards, and they're shifting out of the PPP. He's trying to pull them back, and so he's going to cry wolf in relation to trying to round them up. His government is integrally syndicated with criminality. We know that long before Roger Khan said he used to do a number of activities for them. Long before Miss Young from that international television right. voice news interview with Sue got so much information which left Jack Dale suing in his pants. WPS Clive Thomas had done that long time ago to prove the criminal state of the PPP in Guyana. Now it has gotten worse now in government with petro monies. Firstly, there is a signal modus of a distribution of resources from patron to client with state resources from the coffers going downwards, doling patronage to buy off potential political rivals are also included. And we know the various Judases around the place. But secondly, too, the reverse is happening where monies are moving up the chain of command in today's Guyana in the form of kickbacks, levies paid to superiors, and purchase for positions. We have what is called unfettered permission to extract resources for personal gain and protection from repercussions. Protection right has to be extended to the people at the bottom who are paying for the top. And that is why you not get investigations and so on happening. So we see contracts being given to friends and family. The Schoonard Road is one. And pumping station, I think it was a critic? Yeah. Yes. That the public procurement commission found totally improper. The PPP government has to uphold its end of the bargain to ensure that its officials are saved. The business mode that their leadership has developed has nothing to do with governing this country. It is remarkably effective in achieving its objective, that is, enriching that ruling clique. And Jagdeo should know that rather than talk about a government of which I was a part. I, I, I thank Kemraj for reminding me about that outrageous statement by the Vice President about corruption being the greatest in the APNU AFC era. I think we should start and remember that between 1992 and today, some 32 years have passed. The PPP has been in office for 27 of those 32 years. That is 8 to 5 percent of the years between 1992 and now, there has been a single government, 85 percent, a single government in the People's Progressive Party. Therefore, when we start to ask questions about the transfer of assets from the state to private individuals who support the People's Progressive Party, we don't want to make a propaganda out of this. What we say is, let us have the data, let us have the raw information on all the assets of the state that have been transferred to private individuals during the 27 years that the People's Progressive Party has been in office, and if there were transfers of assets during the five years the AP and UAFC were in office, let us compare them, and then we can begin to see who the beneficiaries of those actions are. As Mr. Jagdeo has invited us to address the issue of corruption, he perhaps would like to tell us why within the last month before the 2015 elections, two oil blocks, <laughs> during an election campaign period where the government activity is supposed to be reduced to just running the basics, 
why two oil blocks, the Kanji and Kaicho blocks, were actually allocated. There was no public adver ad advertisement. There was no invitation to purchase. There has been no criteria provided on the basis upon which those two oil blocks were allocated. Those blocks have since changed hands at millions of US dollars. And these were allocated within a month of the 2015 election. If we want to have a serious discussion as a country about corruption, which we should, we must be willing to discuss corruption. Because the track record that we have got as a country suggests that with the wealth that we have, all that we are going to do is become a rich banana republic. We are not going to achieve anything other than that. We become a rich banana republic with lots of roads, lots of hotels. Most of the citizens can't even afford to, to survive because of the cost of living. And we have these vacuous discussions about corruption that are not based on any sort of data. The government has access to all the information that can be provided to the public on the allocation of resources, Absolutely. on the transfer of assets, on the allocation of companies. How many companies which have been receiving major contracts in road construction have a track record of being more than 20 years old or 10 years old? In the schooner example, the company that won, the MPTAB, completely disqualified every single other competitor and bidder for that contract. 26 and 26, 26 companies, including the most qualified, some of the most qualified contractors in this country, disqualified, leaving one company only. And then that company, their bid is about $600 million over, over the estimate, above. the engineer's estimate. Do you understand the scale of absolute, I, I, I want to say, unusual conduct that is taking place? This case, they completely, completely eliminate six, 26 contractors, several of our best and brightest. And the, the, the contract is awarded at several hundred million dollars over the, S, the engineer's contract. And then you want to come and parade to the public that this is a sign of development. Look at the road, look at the lights. Of course, if you gave anybody $600 million more than the <laughs> estimate that the engineer did, they could put up a lot of lights. They will give you something looking like a road, but exactly what it is. And we have as a country to start locating our discussions, not in the realm of the emotive, not in the realm of propaganda, but let us come to the area of data, and information. And finally, last year we spent a billion dollars from the Nat National Resource Fund. That is no mean sum. Even in the United States of America, of, of America, a billion US dollars is serious money. Can you identify one significant project that you can see right now in this country that says, hey, this is a significant contract? You could build a, a railroad between Diamond and Georgetown for less than half of, of a billion US dollars. You can find transportation solutions for less than $200 million to deal with the crisis we have. We, we have an incomplete bridge, and we have the promise, the absolute promise, that future projects of significance are not going to be subject to feasibility studies. Yes, we are all happy that there will be no tolls to pay, but what is the price of that? And where does that fit in the development plan? Where was there a discussion that, look, the, the bridges over our major rivers are going to be toll free? When was the National Assembly invited to discuss this as a proposal? Yes, you may have grand vote-getting gestures, and I would like to commend the editorial of the Starbuck News, I think it was sometime last week, because at the end of the day, whether you are wealthy or not, your ability to sustain yourself depends on locating whatever you do within the realm of financial responsibility, fiscal responsibility, and feasibilities. And a feasibility study is not limited to numbers. A feasibility study would take into account all the developmental plans that you have. And what do you lose? 
you, the, the, the bridges and the tolls will run you to more than 1.5 billion US dollars. We still have today teachers that we are refusing to pay. We still have today people who are struggling with the cost of living. We still have today people who are not going to be qualified to be able to get jobs. And we want to go down the line of this rhetorical abuse as if we, we are possessed of no brains or as if we are possessed of no ability to think. This is all the Emperor's New Clothes revisited.